Hi, it's Chris Kessler from Kessler Science, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Spring Escape Room, which is an escape room for middle school science students. Season two, this is the second version, and this is going to be a fantastic uh, experience for your students, super easy to set up. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is an escape room? An escape room is an engaging way to help your students review content that you've already previously taught them. If you're already a Kessler Science Lab member, you'll have access to a full one hour long webinar that I have all about escape rooms. But if you wanna learn more about escape rooms, you can find a, a great blog post that I have and I'll link it down below on kesslerscience.com. First, you'll wanna print out some of these great signs for photographing the teams at the end of the escape room. The escape rooms come with some signs for students that did escape about 25 signs, and then it comes with another 25 signs that, for students that did not escape. I've also included a template for uh, you to create your own size as well. And then lastly, I've included a list of about 50 prize ideas that you could use for students that uh, escape that won't break your bank. You'll need one answer sheet per group. I recommend no more than four students per group for maximum engagement. Students can just report their answers to you to see if they're right. You can use the codes to actually open real locks also, or you could use a digital lock form that we've included for the puzzles as well. And they would just need a connected device for that. Digital locks are super easy to integrate with your Google Classrooms, and I have a whole video explaining how to use them. The link's in your teacher directions, along with a list of suggested physical locks if you choose to go that route instead. For this escape room, you wanna make one set of puzzles for each group in your class. I like to use eight manila envelopes uh, to organize the puzzles for each group. They're inexpensive and you can reuse them for other escape rooms as well. Finally, you'll wanna be ready to show the challenge video to start the escape room. It sets the theme and gets the students excited. You can play it from YouTube or from the download that is included with the escape room. Here's puzzle one. It's just a fun maze with a spring theme. You need a copy of the maze and a highlighter. If you wanna save copies between classes, you can laminate the puzzle and provide your students with a dry erase marker. We'll put all the materials in manila envelope labeled puzzle one. Puzzle two is a matching puzzle. You'll cut the pictures of the flowers apart and then cut them in half on the dotted lines. Cut them smoothly so students can't just match up the cut edges. You should have a total of 12 pieces. They go in the next manila envelope, puzzle two. Puzzle three is a math and logic puzzle. This puzzle will need to be completely cut apart on the dotted lines so you have seven equation pieces. There's also a picture of a chain that can be used as an optional clue. Put all the pieces in the puzzle three manila envelope. Puzzle four is all about the science of light. This puzzle has three pieces, a full page coded puzzle, a Venn diagram, and a card to help students remember color combinations. The puzzle looks great in color, but it also works in grayscale printing. The red, blue, and green areas of the Venn diagram are labeled R, B, and G, and the clue card lists what each combination of those colors makes. If they're not sure, students can look at the clue card to determine which area is yellow, magenta, etc. Put the pieces into puzzle four after you're done. Puzzle five is about abiotic factors. This puzzle has a rebus, a notepad hint card, and 10 squares of abiotic and biotic factors. This puzzle is more fun with the individual squares cut apart, but it isn't required. You could leave the 10 squares as one half page instead to save cutting time. The hint written at the end of the rebus may also help students who have never done this kind of puzzle before. Put all the pieces in envelope number five. Puzzle number six uses a dichotomous key to solve it. This puzzle consists of a journal page that includes images of moths and butterflies and a partially completed dichotomous key. The way the key is set up is your students shouldn't be able to just look at the letters or the final description to guess which name goes where. They'll need to actually start at the top of the key and work through it. Those pieces then go into the envelope for puzzle six. Puzzle seven is all about food webs. This puzzle consists of food web diagrams and a chart that shows various producers, 
primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers in an ecosystem. The food web diagrams do not have to be cut apart, but it's more fun if they are. Put all the pieces into envelope seven when you're ready to go. Puzzle eight is all about unbalanced forces. It has three paper elements, a tug of war image, a note written in reverse, and a note about unbalanced forces. This puzzle works best with a mirror for the reverse text, but it's not impossible to complete without one. Students can use their phone as well. Those pieces go into our last envelope for puzzle eight. There you go, your puzzles are all packaged up, ready to go for the group to use. Make a set of envelopes for each group and you'll be ready to have a great day. Be sure to tag me or use the hashtag Kessler Science on all the social media platforms. I love seeing your students doing the escape room, seeing what's going on in your classroom, and uh, just hope that you have a great time with this one. Take care.